Waycross presents an election forum for Northwest Local Schools Board of Education. There are four candidates running for three seats. They are, in alphabetical order, Pamela L. Detzel, Mark Gilbert, Michael Harlow, and Joe Yoshimira. And good evening. I'd like to welcome you to yet another Waycross Election Forum. This being for the Northwest Local School District's Board of Education. I'm Jason Grzgorek, your host and moderator for this evening. If you're joining us on September 28th, please be active this evening, and I will get that information to you once we introduce the panelists. I'm very fortunate to have all four candidates with me this evening, and they are seated with me here, starting with Ms. Detzel, Mr. Gilbert, Mr. Harlow, and Mr. Yoshimira. Thank you for joining us. In a moment, I will ask our candidates to open up our forum here with a two-minute opening statement. From there, I will open the, phone, the email to you afterwards, and then we will begin questioning starting from myself and hopefully from emails from you. And with that, I will open up two minutes to Ms. Detzel. Good evening. Thank you. My name is Pam Detzel. I have been on the Northwest School Board for 20 years now. Um, I am a lifelong resident. I attended Pleasant Run Elementary. I grew up in Pleasant Run Farms, um, Pleasant Run Junior High at the time, and a graduate of Northwest High School. I married my high school sweetheart, Jim, that also attended uh, Weigel at, for kindergarten, Struble Elementary, White Oak, I believe, for a day until they moved, and then he went over to Pleasant Run Junior High and also Northwest High School. Uh, we got married and chose to live in this school district. Uh, we have three daughters that went through all the schools and graduated all three from Coleraine High School. Um, like it's, I am currently president of the board. Um, over the last 20 years, there's been a lot of things that we've had very good times and very rough times. Um, I currently am the member of the finance committee. I'm also on the district's health insurance committee as well. Um, the other thing is we are small business owners in the district and even more exciting, we are now grandparents of a soon, not soon to be, but in a few years we'll be attending Weigel Elementary and another one on the way. So I think it's pretty fair to say as a lifelong resident, a parent, an alumni, a business owner, and a grandparent, I've really got vested interest in this school district. Thank you. Mr. Gilbert, a few minutes to you. Thank you, Jason. Uh, my name is Mark Gilbert. I am a lifelong Colerain Township resident. Uh, I have been in the Northwest School District for 28 years, tw just about 28 years. Um, I am married and we have raised our two children in the Northwest City School District. Uh, recently had a son graduate in the class of 2015 in a very large uh, SUMA class, which was awesome. Um, I have a daughter in the middle school and uh, she is in the eighth grade. I married Tia uh, Gilbert, uh, Kelhoffer is a maiden name, uh, a, kind of a big family in Colerain. Um, I am passionate about running for this. I've never been on the school board. Um, I love our community and I look at the success that we've had uh, raising our children in this community and to set an example for my children, uh, the best thing to do is actually show them how to give back to the community not just talk about it, but actually step up and participate in uh, trying to make a difference. Um, I th am very appreciative for the opportunity uh, to run and work with uh, the current uh, board members. Uh, they've done a great job creating an environment for uh, my children to learn in. And so thank you for having us. Hi. Mr. Harlow. Hi, my name's, my name's Michael Harlow. Four years ago, uh, I was blessed to have received the uh, support of the community and be elected to the Northwest Local School District. Uh, since then, I've served on the Audit Committee and the Building Committee, and we, I'm currently Vice President. And I've been legislative liaison for all four years. Um, really proud of some of the things that we've done over the past few years in the district. Uh, I've lived here. I'm not a lifelong resident. I'm a uh, McColeraine resident by choice. I uh, came to Cincinnati in 1999 and Coleraine Township in 2001. I've been here ever since. Live with my wife and our two children as well. My, uh, <clears throat> my day job, I am the Ohio Director of Council for a Strong America and we advocate for policies that benefit at-risk children. I am also um, very glad to be active in the community in a number of levels and uh, 
I'm just looking forward to another four years and keeping the district going in the right direction. Hey, Mr. Yoshimura. Thank you for having me here tonight. Uh, my name is Joe Yoshimura. I am a candidate for the Northwest School Board. I'm a Green Township resident of 11 years. I'm married to Martha Yoshimura now. Um, I have three children, uh, college graduates, one from UD, one from Ohio State, and one from UC. Um, I have taught, and I will be the only teacher, if elected, on the Board of Education. I have taught for over 35 and a half years. Um, the last 26 years of my uh, teaching career, I was at Walnut Hills High School in the Cincinnati Public School System. I had the awards I won for, for teaching in 2009 was my most prestigious. I won the uh, USA U U University of Cincinnati Educator of the Year Award. I also, in 1998, won the Golden Apple Award at Walnut Hills for excellence in teaching. Um, I'd like to end this by saying, even though I'm not a Democrat, I, I heard something from Tom Perez saying that change will come if and when it starts with the Board of Education elections. That was my epiphany. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Thank you very much. And with that, we will now open the emails to you. If you are watching us on September 28th, please join in. That's live at waycross.org. All questions will be answered this evening. If you are emailing us, please let us know, the, obviously, the question, part of town you're in, and make sure that it is a broad question, that it is for all candidates to answer, not pointed questions. And with that, I will begin with questioning with Mr. Gilbert. And first and foremost, as uh, we kind of start these out, why run? What, what is the sole purpose and reason to run for the Northwest Local School Board? Um, thank you. Um, first and foremost, um, f raising two children, uh, I want them to learn from their parents by how we actually um, we act and how we, um, I'm sorry, um, I have to set the example for them. I, when I was asked to, uh, I had some friends recommend that I run. I thought about it, I prayed a lot about it, um, and I have never done anything like this. It, it's, it's new to me, um, but it's a community, and it's a community I look back on and I think, uh, I've seen some amazing things as we raised our kids, and uh, I, see, I see this board opportunity as uh, each of us are a piece of this puzzle. Uh, we each bring a unique uh, piece to the picture. Um, I want to take whatever talents and skill sets that I have through either my career or uh, life events and bring that to the board and try to give that back to the community. Um, like I said, I, this, is, this is brand new to me. Um, and so there's an element of uh, uncharted water. Uh, I'm kind of navigating this day to day um, from the campaigning to uh, questions just like this. Um, it has been uh, well thought out and I'm very, very passionate about a four year term and trying to build on what has uh, been a foundation that's been built in the school district up to now. Um, thank you. All right, Mr. Harlow. <clears throat> I've worked in education policy for a number of years and you know, it was occurring to me that you know, when I first ran four years ago that uh, things were happening uh, in, in other districts that were really starting to move ahead and uh, I thought it would be good to have our community here uh, catch up a little bit and that's starting to that's really starting to show some uh, some fruit in our you know, our test scores in our new building campaign and our um, ability to be fiscally responsible and actually have uh, you know, two uh, slight uh, tax reductions going on. Uh, one was uh, passed in con conjunction with the bond levy in 2015, and the other one uh, was just pa this past May. So uh, I really feel like the district is starting to head in the right direction, and I want to keep that momentum going. All right. Mr. Uh, you might want to uh, You might want to say that education has been in my blood. Uh, for 35.64 years, I've taught school. Um, I think... I wanted to get into this because I've been listening 
And even in my campaigning, I've met people with, they vary from negative to neutral to positive thoughts about the school district. And one guy said to me, well, why don't you run? And I said, eh, you know. Well, I thought about it and I thought about it and I said, yeah, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna run for the board and see what happens. But I have an insight to the educational processes being a teacher for 35 years. And I want, I want to keep that, uh, you know, that image that I have of education and the education that I brought to, uh, from Walnut Hills to the Northwest School District. It's not gonna be a miracle thing. It's going to be a slow but positive process to get there. Ms. Detzel, same question. Well, I'll start all the way back in high school. I was very active at Northwest High School. In fact, I was the first S when they changed the PTA to the PTSA for student involvement. Um, I graduated class president. I went on once we had children. I was PTA president at Pleasant Run Elementary. Um, I had one at the middle school, was active there. And then all of a sudden I got a phone call from the superintendent at the time that said, Pam, what do you have going on? And I'm rattling everything off and he said, what do you think about running for the school board? And the phone was silent. I really had no idea what I was getting into, but with a lot of encouragement, the next thing I knew, I was running. and. Over the years, it's always amazed me when people, t and I even saw today on Facebook, watch tonight to see everyone's platform. I still don't understand that. To me, a school board member is not a political position. It's all about what's best for our children. And the superintendent at the time, when he was trying to convince me this was a good thing to do, he said, I said, I don't know if I can do this. And his, his response was, just always think about it and answer it as a mom. Well, guess what? The moms out there, there there's a lot of parents that, that if there's different issues at school, they just kind of feel lost. And they're able to talk to me. And then I'm able to point them in the right direction. So I'm here for the kids. Every vote I've ever made has always been what's best for kids. That's how it will always be. No platform here. All right. Mr. Harlow, so next question comes to you. What do you feel or what do you see are the two biggest obstacles facing the Northwest Local School District? Well, I think one obstacle uh, we're slowly but surely overcoming, and uh, as Mr. Yoshimura said in his last answer, it's not going to be a, um, you know, it's not gonna be a miracle turnaround. Uh, the community perception of the school district is really starting to change in a positive direction. Um, I have I have people who, you know, used to come up to me and, and complain, and now even some of them are starting to um, tell me about the good things that they're seeing in the district. Um, so I think it's, you know, one obstacle is one that we will constantly work to overcome, uh, and I think we're, we're in the right direction there. Uh, I think the second obstacle is really just the, the way society is changing and we need to keep up with that and so many different levels from the from the technology to how we uh, relate to children and parents and how uh, how things evolve uh, our you know our building plan um, you know we're building new elementary schools but at the high school level you know there's just so many changes that we need to keep up with uh, you know college credit plus which 10 years ago dual enrollment was so underutilized that i had to go door to door in the ohio legislature and tell people what it was and uh, you know that's evolved into college credit plus so uh, just you know keeping up with the changes and and continuing to build that strong support with the entire community of of northwest green township coloring township springfield township butler county uh, you know it's, it's those are those are our obstacles those are our challenges I think one of the obstacles that I am going to overcome, hopefully, is to win over the community and to get the negative thoughts out of some of the people that have uh, expressed those thoughts to me over the, over the last six months or so. Uh, I also want to bridge, and this goes along with it, bridge the gap between the public and pu private school parents, because I think if we can can coordinate with those folks. We'll have, they will 
have a better understanding of the, the uh, Northwest School District. The other thing um, that I think is really, really important is the, with the diverse cultural uh, student population in the schools, and I'm talking from K all the way through 12, I think we need to adjust our, maybe some of our curriculum, maybe some of our attitudes uh, of students by some of these special classes to bring forth a, a, a better understanding of the uh, different groups within the uh, public school system. Ms. Detzel. Well, one, I think, is state funding. Um, the uh, Ohio Supreme Court ruled that the state funding in Ohio 20 years ago was ruled unconstitutional. Here we sit 20 years later, and they still haven't found a solution for that, which makes it very hard for all school districts to continually have to go back to our, our residents for funding. It's ever-changing, and it's hard to um, relay that to, to our parents, to our, to our citizens that are in our, our school district. For example, for 2018, um, the the, um, I'm sorry, the transportation, the, we've had, we're going to lose $1 million for the state transportation reimbursement. We used to get 50% reimbursement for transportation. Now, for 2018, they're going to lower it to 38%. There's a million dollars we have to figure out how to come up with. And continue, not only figure out how to come up with it, but also explain to our taxpayers, this isn't us mismanaging our money. It's the state constantly coming up with unfunded mandates and so on and so forth. The other thing real quick, and Michael touched on, is um, we need to reach all students. It's, I think we've learned that not every student has to take the, the route to go to college. And I think we're doing a very good job with that with some of these, um, with Butler Tech and all the, uh, I could go on and on about all the opportunities students have for Butler Tech for another avenue to go for their career path. And hey, Mr. Gilbert. Thank you. Um, I think first, it's exciting for the school district because we have three new buildings that are going up. Uh, and in them three new buildings, we have a lot of technology that's going in. And technology is great uh, as long as we don't lose that um, element of human touch, that chemistry between a teacher and a student, um, that ability for a teacher to spark something in a child uh, to maybe have them understand something or develop a trust with the teacher uh, to step out uh, so that they can learn on a different level. Um, I think we have in uh, our communities, uh, the, the relationship between the communities and the school district is a uh, very big area for improvement, um, and especially in Coloring Township. Uh, and I think, um, I think in society right now, uh, the boundaries for right and wrong are expanding, and I think a more conservative uh, platform uh, and guidelines, developing a, a, a more uh, reliable guideline for our children to follow and to uh, participate in, I think is, is critical. Uh, I think that is, um, you know, we, we lay that on our children when we're raising them. We give them guidelines and boundaries that they can um, grow to, and, and I think we have to do that in our schools as well. Mr. Yushimura, the next question comes to you. Um, Mr. Mr. Harlow and Ms. Detzel have brought up a very valid point in regards to perceptions and communications. What do you feel is the, the role of the board to communicate to its stakeholders, be it the parents and the students, and how do they go about doing so? Well, I, um, first of all, I think um, they have to communicate that the, the board is doing everything possible to make their child or that student in this Northwest District um, be afforded the best possible education that he can get, whether it's a vocational technical background or whether it's an academic one. Um, I, th this is a learning process for me, 
And believe me, I will be going to all the schools to get input from them and also going to community uh, uh, meetings to listen to their, their concerns too. So I really, really can't talk to that issue that the other three had uh, talked about. Okay. Ms. Detzel. Well, I, communication and reaching out, it, there's always going to be some people that no matter what you do, they're only going to hear what they want to hear. But that isn't an excuse for us to quit trying to reach them. Um, we, and you guys would know better than me, how many years ago we went with Waycross and we film all of our meetings now. And at first I thought, I wonder how many people watch. And it amazes me how I'll hear different things. Somebody will say something or make a comment about a topic or whatever. So people are watching and that's good because we're not hiding anything. And, and so, Number one, the meeting's being published. The other thing is during our board meetings, you know, we have very good conversations. Perfect example, Monday night. It isn't any secret for any parents that are currently in the district. It's been a little rough with transportation um, this year. Not due to not having a great transportation department, we do, but we need more drivers as of every other district as well. You drive by any school district and there's a big banner hiring drivers. So we had a, and, and, and I would be just as upset if my child got to school late or so on and so forth, but we extended that conversation. We did it in front of everybody Monday night, and we voted to increase the sub pay for bus drivers quite a bit, up to 18, 16 an hour, so that we're ahead of all of our neighboring districts so that we can get bus drivers and get our kids to school. But the point is, I'm hoping our community saw how we work together saw how we are trying to do everything we can to solve that problem. And that's just one example. Mr. Gilbert. Thank you. Um, it's, it's the perception, this, uh, like Mr. Yashmura has, has spoken, this is new water for me. Um, I've been going to the board meetings and talking to uh, teachers in, in our community. Um, I was talking with Mrs. Detzel before the, this uh, panel. And I was really impressed with the board meeting on Monday evening. Um, it was very family-like. And I, I think it, to not get that out to our community is, an, it's tragic, really. Uh, it would be nice if people actually saw that. Uh, it was really heartwarming uh, to see how they honored a, uh, an employee who passed uh, several months ago. And uh, it, it, j just like Pam said, uh, it doesn't matter if you have newsletters and it doesn't matter what forum you have. I've been in leadership for 20 plus years uh, in the medical field. Um, I can send an email, I can do whatever. Somebody always is, uh, has missed uh, the message. Uh, I think part of it is uh, there's an element of it, it's the parent's responsibility to engage uh, in their children's education and I think an element of energy spent toward engaging that instead of just trying to take everything to them um, is is a, an area of focus. Um, but I think that's the that's the magic of having five people on a board. Each person brings something unique. Uh, if we work in unison and to get uh, together, uh, we could all of us take an, an effort in some fashion to go out and connect on a different level. Um, you know, all it takes is that one uh, moment with somebody to really change how they perceive the board. And, you know, kind of as the old Prell commercial, you know, I tell two people, they tell two people, and so on and so on. Um, so it would have to be very intentional. Ms. Detzel, um, you work. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Harlow. <laughs> I, knew that I, I knew I was going to do this. I knew this, okay. Mr. Harlow. Two minutes to you. Okay, yes, so th thank you, Jason. Um, <laughs> you know, the, um, what, what we run into, and, and you know, Pam touched on it earlier uh, with the, the transportation issues that we've been having, uh, and that, that was a very good, uh, very robust discussion. And, um, you know, I think we're moving in the right direction. We'll have the highest sub pay in the western half of Hamilton County for our bus drivers. Uh, we're also advertising for substitute teachers. I was... Uh, I was an hour away from here. I was north of Dayton the other day, and sure enough, I drove past this high school, and there they are now hiring bus drivers. Uh, and, they, and, and that is a permanent sign. I mean, you can tell it's not a it's not a temporary sign. It's it's permanently affixed to the fence, and uh, it's, that's the state of uh, that's the state of hiring bus drivers in Ohio right now. But you know, 
Uh, as far as communicating with the vo voters, when I was first elected, I thought my email box would just be burning up with stuff on a daily basis, everything from, you know, the bus is late to um, my kids having trouble with his teacher and everything. But, you know, uh, those day-to-day -day things were obviously handled by the superintendent, and the community certainly seems to be, you know, very, very plugged into that. Um, you know, I... There's a lot that we can do, and we do a lot of official things. All the things you can think of, you know, Facebook, Instagram, you know, the whole thing. We, we do it. Uh, but it's the getting out and meeting in the community. It's the impromptu things that I find more than somebody sent firing off an email to me. It's the, you know, people you run into at Home Depot or, uh, you know, my son's soccer practice or, you know, whatever it is. And uh, just, just getting out there and being in the community and, and showing, showing that is uh, really helping to, to build a lot, of, uh, a lot of bridges in the community. We are halfway through our time here on September 28th, so if you are watching, this is the Winton, the uh, Waycross, that's where we are, Waycross <laughs> yeah. Election Forum for the Northwest Local School District's Board of Education. I'm Jason Grzgorek, and apparently flubbing up a lot tonight, <laughs> and I apologize to all of you. Our next question is coming from, to me, from me to Ms. Detzel, but if you'd like to get in, please uh, make your voice known. Live at waycross.org is our email. Again, all questions will be answered tonight. Ms. Detzel, next question. Uh, we obviously like to know that our board is working together collaboratively, but also that spearhead comes from the superintendent. How is the, how important is it working with uh, Mr. Bowling, and where does his leadership take the board and you as a board member? First of all, I'll tell you, I've worked with six superintendents and three treasurers. The team we have right now, Todd, the communi communication with him is amazing. It is nothing for a, a, a day, barely a day goes by where he doesn't text all of us, not just one of us, and updates us if, if there's something that's happening, if he um, has a question for us. Um, he is accessible whether he's in town, out of town. He returns every phone call. Um, I feel very confident when um, a community member contacts me and is upset about something, I know that I can talk to Todd. And before I even get through explaining what's going on, he's already asking for their phone number, and he calls them personally to discuss the issue. And so I, I, we are very, very fortunate to have Todd with, as a superintendent. Um, I know, I don't think your question was of the treasurer as well, just... No, it okay. was superintendent okay. only. But um, yes, and, and that's why I'm very proud to say we just gave an extended contract um, to Todd so that when all these new initiatives are going, I think that sent an important message to the staff that here's somebody that's going to be here over the next five years. It's not somebody that's only going to be here a year or two, implement all this stuff and then leave. So we are, I think we're all very fortunate that, that Todd's here. Mr. Gilbert. Thank you. Um, in the Monday board uh, meeting, I watched uh, Mr. Bowling in action uh, interact with a, the family who uh, had a loved one pass. And his compassion and was just amazing. Um, as I engage more in this and I see more of the interaction, uh, leadership comes from the top. Culture comes from the top down. Um, when in, in my employment, uh, when I am confident in my leader, uh, it makes me more confident in my role. Uh, it gives me the ability to maybe swim a little further in deeper water and try things, uh, knowing that my leader has my back and that I can always go back to them for either mentorship or guidance or direction. Um, from what I see in Mr. Bowling, he provides all of that. Um, I'm really impressed with, I was just, like I said, I was speaking with uh, Mrs. Detzel before this, and I'm really impressed with the platforms and the foundations that our board has put in place uh, for our school district. And um, having an extended contract with Mr. Bowen is, as far as I'm concerned, a, an excellent execution and move for our, um, for our school district. Um, I think he exudes the leadership that is needed uh, and really, it's, it's that interaction uh, with the community. Um, some folks can be great leaders, but they don't interact well with either the community or folks. I think he has a well, uh, a very good, healthy balance on all of it from what I've seen. So I, I'm actually looking forward to working with him if I get an opportunity. All right. Mr. Harlow, same question. Well, I was pleased to, uh, you know, hire Todd when the superintendent position was open. Uh, I 
think he has done an outstanding job. I'm uh, pleased that he accepted our contract and we'll, we'll be here now for the for the next five years. Uh, simply put, he was the right person at the right time for this job for superintendent Northwest Local. And uh, he, you know, was a lifelong basically resident of, of Northwest and he'd been a principal at uh, Northwest High School. He'd been a teacher before that. And, you know, I, I heard great things about him as a principal I mean, when, when we had, you know, small children and, and running for school board was, you know, about the last thing on my mind. I, I was, we knew people, you know, who had children at, um, at Northwest and uh, the, the sea change that he brought in there was uh, very refreshing from what I was hearing. And uh, <clears throat> then he, you know, went to central office for a few years, business manager. He has his great background and it really set him up just to be the right person, the right leader for our district at this time. And yeah, I, I'd echo what Pam says. He, he definitely communicates with us very well. Just, it could be just simple, even simple building updates uh, on the construction or things like that. He, he does a good job of, um, letting us know the good the good things as well as the challenges. Um, so, you know, it's uh, always great to, to see him out in the community too and just the way he interacts with people. Um, and Mark's right, he, he did a great job at the, uh, you know, seeing him interact with the Solomon family on, on Monday. Um, you know, he just really, really touches all the bases. And Mr. Um, I have very limited uh, interchange or uh, with uh, the superintendent however what I've seen is he's very capable very competent um, what I would like for him to do and this goes back to Mr. Harlow here uh, I would like him not only to show leadership uh, as far as communicating with the board but also to uh, be uh, accessible to the community whether it's uh, the school personnel or community organizations, et cetera. So he's got a heck of a responsibility here. Uh, and uh, so far of what I've seen, he's done a pretty good job. Wonderful. Next question actually is an email question from Dave. Uh, and this is actually gonna go to Mr. start with Mr. Gilbert. Dave writes, why is it so hard to hire bus drivers? Is there a syst systemic issue endemic to the Ohio system? If you can answer to that, um, again, two minutes, we'll start with Mr. Gilbert. Great. Um, I, I can't speak to that. I've not been in the operations of the school district, um, I, I, but I have been in a leadership role for quite a while, and uh, I, I'm right currently working in um, uh, a nonprofit uh, medical entity, and, and I'm actually going through that with uh, hiring nurses right now. And the clients and patients that we take care of are uh, in dire need of this a lot of times it comes down to the funding and the ability to pay and staying up with uh, the uh, current wages and, and um, competitiveness with uh, the surrounding environment um, it was a f uh, seamless uh, vote uh, Monday night to raise uh, the sub uh, pay for bus drivers which was you know here here's a here's a need in front of the board and they acted on it, and they took the steps to uh, to address that. Uh, I'm I'm going to say, f from what I can um, discern from this, is it's going to come down to money um, and the pay, uh, and um, that's I would think that's probably the primary focus of it. All right, Mr. Harlow. I think the money and the pay are absolutely. Uh, absolutely part of it. It requires a commercial driver's license, which uh, is not something that everybody is, is capable of having. I think our bus drivers are doing an outstanding job. They're uh, really dedicated when they're um, doubling up shifts. And sometimes a bus driver that's used to making one run in the morning and one in the evening is now making two in the morning and two in the evening, or they're putting uh, two routes worth of kids on one bus. Uh, it's, it's turned into a very hard job and a very demanding job. Uh, for our bus drivers. It, it always is. We just had some uh, challenges this week because of our um, our shortage of substitutes. Uh, fi finding people uh, is a it's a statewide issue. I'm, I think it's also in other states. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily endemic to the state of Ohio. It's uh, it's a you know you start as a substitute bus driver, so there's no guarantee you're going to work every day. Although it looks like in our district there's a good chance. Um, I'm not making any promises tonight, but it just seems like it's <laughs> going that way. Uh, 
and you know, I I think that there's there's a crisis across industry as as, as Mr. Gilbert you know alluded to earlier, um, and I think a lot of it has to do with some of the societal issues we're facing, such as the the op opioid epidemic, not just for bus drivers but for other talented professionals out there. It's it's really robbing us of of quality labor. I think the major major problem that we have as far as hiring bus drivers um, is the fact that we need to pay these bus drivers their just due. I talked to a few bus drivers and believe me, some of them are running 10 hour day shifts. That's crazy. Going from one school to another, um, dealing with the traffic, et cetera, et cetera. Dealing with the parents who scream and yell at them because they didn't pick up their son or daughter, or they um, uh, missed the bus, and what? And it's all the bus driver's fault. They've got a lot of problems with uh, with, with with that situation. Uh, please understand one thing here: a good percentage of these bus drivers live in Northwest School District, so for them, it's their livelihood, and. Uh, Putting all this pressure on them to do double shifts and or double routes every day is not making their life very pleasant. I say let's pay the bus drivers what they deserve to be paid. Ms. Detzel. Well, to, to speak on pretty much what everybody else said, as far as why, I, I don't know that there's any single answer. I mean, it is something it's – definitely statewide and like Michael said I'm I'm not sure if it's other states as well but I do know they need their CDL um, then we require safety courses because we don't want somebody just because they have their CDL to get in a bus I mean that is a huge responsibility to drive the kids and and um, deal with any kind of discipline issues and then have to meet an angry parent when that door opens so yeah I think I, I I think it's hard to get people to want to do that. Um, I think we've taken a big step. I mean, we were paying 16, 16, I don't remember the exact cent, 16 something an hour, and we've bumped it up to 18, 16. Um, that definitely puts us over all our surrounding districts. So I am hoping that it will be easier to get subs. And then once we get these subs, we're hoping that they'll enjoy their work here at Northwest School District and want to become a permanent driver. Um, I mean, that is our, that's our goal. All right. Looks like we have yet another email question, and I cannot wait. Mr. Harlow, this is coming to you. Uh, can, uh, this is coming from Joanne. Joanne asks, can you tell me if your future plans include giving computers or tablets to high school students like the ones given to students in the Butler Tech program? I care to speak on that, and if Obviously, this is one of those yes or no questions. To expound on that more, if this is a yes, let's, let's go on more on that technological basis as well. What technological advances do you see going with, uh, in the Northwest School District? I think technology is crucially important. It's one of the main issues that I brought up four years ago. And our district is doing great with that because we've had, uh, you know, our, our new buildings are certainly uh, being built with the latest technology in mind and the, and the um, electrical and electronic capacity to to be able to, to run them for everybody. And we made upgrades uh, for that reason at, at Coleraine High School. So definitely in favor of all the um, of students receiving a tablet. Um, for those that ha have not had them already, um, I definitely think it's, it's not only the way of the future, it's the way of the present. And... Uh, Meeting students where they are is very important, and the technology also really is an eye opener for the parents as well. Uh, you know, parents, you know, people who are who are my age, and I'm probably the youngest person sitting here, but uh, you know, didn't grow up with that in the classroom. It was it was toys and games, and, and uh, so it's been a real uh, eye opening event for a lot of parents too to see just how useful. Uh, current technology is with student learning and the, the feedback that the instructors can use to tailor instruction. The personalized instruction is really one of the most important reasons to have this level of technology. So lesson plans and the pace can be adapted to meet every single student on, indiv in, on an individualized basis where they are. Right. Ms. Yushmir. 
Um, just a short answer to this question. Yes, I think, you know, we should get um, the tablets for the children and the students, especially in the high school. Um, but the, the only drawback here is the question of how much it's going to cost. Okay? That's all, you know, that's all I can say about that. All right. Ms. Detzel. I would say, it, unfortunately, things like this always come down to funding. Um, absolutely, that is our goal to be able to do. Um, depends on how many things get thrown at us between now and then with state funding and, and everything else that's going on. I, I am excited to say, though, I, I know at Coleraine Elementary we were able to um, update fiber optics and put Wi-Fi through the building. So that's going to get Chromebooks in with the, the younger kids. So our technology, there's definitely a plan there. And our hope is to one day every student will have, have one in their hand. Mr. Gilbert. Thank you. Um, I think the technology is, is critical. Uh, in the uh, board meeting uh, Monday, uh, they had uh, the chief administrative officer for Westchester Hospital at the uh, board meeting, and he gave a uh, update on some of the opportunities at the hospital and the technology that Westchester is sharing with the students from the Da Vinci robot to uh, actually working in the OR and actually he bragged on one of the students holding an organ uh, that was removed. Um, I think having that technology and having uh, people prepared for the vocation is critical. Um, and that may be through a Butler Tech program, that may be for a program that they enroll in, um, but I think it's critical for the school district to prepare. Uh, not go into uh, a situation where they're already behind the, the eight ball, so to speak, for, um, from a technology perspective. I mean, we're in an age where a surgeon can do a procedure on you in a different room uh, through a, uh, a microscope and a robot. And uh, I think that speaks to the technology. And if we're handing them an abacus to do a da Vinci procedure, that's, that's not going to cut it. I mean, we need to make sure that we match um, society and the vocation that these uh, kids are going into. All right. We're coming down to the last 10 minutes so that I can give you an ad adequate amount of time for a closing statement. So our last two questions will be one minute apiece. Mr. Yoshimura, the question comes to you. Uh, the district is a very large district. Uh, Mr. Harlow pointed out all of the, the area, areas and avenues, even going into Butler County. What do you, how do you feel about collaborations and how important is it for the no Northwest Local School Board? I think the collaboration between the Northwest School Board and the schools and the community, the people, uh, the property owners, the people who pay the bills through the levies, that has all got to come together. If we can link all of those, those three factors together, I think we can possibly uh, move towards a more positive community uh, attitude towards the Board of Education and the Northwest School District. I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Absolutely. Um, I, ha, with the expanse that is Northwest Local School District, how important are collaborations to the district? Collabor all kinds of collaborations. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Um, we are, and, and we are involved in quite a few collaborations, just to name a few. We are in a consortium now with other school districts for our health insurance. Just like all of you out there, the school districts are being hit hard with, with um, health care going through the roof. Um, we formed a consortium with other districts, and we were able to help um, control our cost more. Um, so that, that has been a wonderful example of a consortium that has literally saved the district millions of dollars. But I think we're continually, our, our um, relationship with Butler Tech is amazing. And like I said, just the opportunities for the students of today, it, it is so much more from auto mechanics to to um, the robotics with the hospital. They're just getting hands-on experience. And we have companies coming to Butler Tech wanting to hire these kids right when they're out of high school. Mr. Gilbert. I think collaboration uh, on, t on two levels. One, one I call our community the village. They're the village that raised my children. Um, 
whether that's uh, I'm sitting in the bleachers uh, in a football game or I'm going to a school board meeting and I'm talking to people or as I'm campaigning, I think that collaboration and getting out and actually having uh, eye to eye contact and having conversation is, is critical and sharing what's going on in the actual school district. I think uh, more than anything, I think it's getting out to um, everybody at every, every different level. Um, sharing what's going on, I, I think as Pam shared, collaborating to cost, uh, save, uh, do cost reduction is critical. And I think uh, the, the two levels are communicating with parents and, uh, I'm sorry. That's fine. Okay. You get, you get, and Mr. Harlow? <clears throat> I think that community, community collaborations are very important. Uh, the collaborations that we've entered in that were touched on earlier, uh, which have saved the district money uh, and provided uh, good benefits for our employees, also important too. We always have to be thinking about how we can not just work with people and also uh, understand their concerns. Uh, very true on a, on a macro level with the uh, you know three townships and a uh, portion of Butler County that make up our uh, make up our school district. Very and, and we do have a piece of Forest Park as well and uh, one building in North College Hill. But uh, these are very. Uh, these are very important uh, steps for the, for the district taking. The district has been taking on, on a personal level. Uh, you know, at, when I was first on the board, uh, a person who decidedly did not vote for me uh, expressed some concerns after a meeting one time, and I ended up going to Skyline for lunch with him, and we, we have definitely established a, a good rapport. And uh, another person, about six months later, same thing. Uh, and we went to La Rosa's for lunch, and you know we also have a good report. And my wife wonders why I've gained so much weight in this job. But uh, you know, it's, that, it's we do what it takes. And that's your minute. Thank you, <laughs> Ms. Detzel. You will end the, the final with the final question, and I always like to do that with the with the uh, infamous uh, crystal ball question. Uh, Mr. Harlow made the great analogy and, and discussion point of evolution that this this board is now ev evolving. This the whole district is evolving. What is the new horizon or that evolution that you would like to speak, see were you to be elected and we come back four years later? Well, I think the most exciting thing after working years and years on failed levies is the fact that the current board, we were able to put up a um, bond levy and an operating levy that actually lowered everyone's taxes. Not a lot but it did not raise your taxes. And what we're seeing now is going from five elementaries to three state-of-the-art elementaries that are, are slated to open in August of 2018. We are gonna provide um, all-day kindergarten. We have, right now, we're piloting that in several of our buildings now and a waiting list a mile long. So to me now, the excitement of seeing the community that supported the schools and now to see those doors open and I want to see the reaction of the kids and all the good things that are kind of come because of the support of that. All right. Mr. Gilbert. Um, we, tonight we've talked a lot about operations, we've talked a lot about a lot of various things and I think uh, we got the technology coming, we got the new buildings, we've got the, uh, the funds coming in and I think it's time to, to drive that through and when I say drive that through that is to support the teachers and support the people who are actually looking our kids in their eyes every single day. And we can have all the technology in the world if we're not connecting with the kids on a personal level. Uh, I, don't, I just don't see it being as effective as it can be. So I think to uh, level that horizon out and drive it, uh, say, drive it home, if you will, um, is I think we have to focus on the teachers. We have to listen to them. We have to get feedback from them. After all, they're the experts. They're the ones that are working with the kids uh, uh, most of the day, uh, of our kids' waking day. So we're positioned ourselves well, but I think we have to focus on the teachers as well. Okay. Mr. Harlow. In my crystal ball, I see uh, more graduates walking across the stage at Coleraine and Northwest. I see more graduates walking across the stage with credentials from Butler Tech. And I see more graduates walking across the stage with an associate's degree as well. Uh, I also see uh, neighborhoods starting to uh, pick up again, uh, particularly where our three new elementary schools are being placed. I just heard on, on, uh, on the radio today that uh, 
the housing market could be is the demand is there but the supply of available homes isn't and uh, millennials are really starting to enter the the uh, home buying market and um, you know millennials are at the age where a lot are starting to have school age children and I, I think that we're hitting uh, we're hitting the market with our uh, brand new buildings at just the right time for that. Right. And Mr. Yeshmer. Currently we are ranked 23rd out of 30 surrounding school districts as far as pay for teachers. We are, one of my platform issues is to keep the energetic teachers. And if that means paying them more money at a sacrifice of, do, uh, of cutting back on something else, we need to do that. We also need to have the personnel at these schools. I don't care if they're security. I don't care if they're serving the lunches, the custodial staff, oh, the assistant principals, whatever, the clerical staff. I need for them in four years to say, hey, Mr. Yoshimori, you did a good job because we're happy to be here. We're, we're taking care of these kids. We're making sure that they're safe and secure every day uh, that they come to the school. Thank you. All right. All right. We have made it to the bottom of the time, and that means that I at least can give you 30 seconds for a closing statement. I will start with Mr. Yoshimura for that opportunity. It is m one of my major points of my, if I am elected to this position, is to visit every school in the district. And I'm talking about elementary uh, all the way to the high schools, and to listen to the concerns that they have within those buildings. Um, I also want to go to the community meetings and uh, listen to their concerns and bring them back to the board. All right. Mr. Harlow. Four years ago, uh, I, I was blessed to be uh, placed on this board by the voters of the school district. Uh, we've had a lot of challenges. We've hired a new treasurer, we've hired a new superintendent, we've uh, passed two levies. and. Uh, I really feel that the district is heading in the right direction, and I look forward to being able to give you four more years of service. All right. Mr. Gilbert. Thank you. Um, thanks for putting it up. I've been very nervous doing this tonight, obviously. Um, this is all brand new water for me. Uh, I respect and admire all the experience that each one of these folks brings to the table. I'm a little jealous of our board members that they have this much uh, knowledge in the school arena. I'll tell you that I will come in and work hard for you and your children. Um, I have great leadership ability. I've been in the medical field for 30 years and have successfully managed uh, multi-million dollar uh, organizations. Thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Detzel. Thank you. I would just like to say thank you for this evening. Um, and the thing that probably the biggest reward for me all these years is the 40 graduations that I have attended and half of them being able to be on stage and personally shake each one of those kids' hands. Some of them going over a lot more obstacles than other, but it, it, it is the most rewarding thing there is. I'd appreciate your vote on November 7th. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us this evening. I greatly appreciate your time. And I also want to thank all of you for joining us as well. Now that we've given you the information, it is now to do your duty. If you need more information in regards to candidates and issues, you can check out all of our Waycross election forums, as well as going to boe.hamilton-co.org. That is the Hamilton County Board of Elections website. There you can get even more information in regards to the candidates and issues that affect you. Just remember, early voting does begin October 11th, so if that is something that is intriguing to you and is important to you, please do so. Polls on November 7th do open at 6.30 a.m., and with the information that we've been able to supply with you, to you, please do the responsible item and remember to vote on November 7th. Thank you and have a great evening. Waycross takes no position on candidates or issues. We conduct these forums so that our viewers may be better informed voters for the November 7th election.